God, have your own way with us. We want to honor you. We want to live by the golden rule, what we've labeled the golden rule. We just want to love and honor you by loving and, and caring for others. So help us change our hearts to be more like you. Shape us and mold us so that absolute sway you have over our hearts and our minds. In your name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. All right. So we've all heard the golden rule, right? We've all heard it. And uh, most non-Christians have heard it too. And they don't know it's a religious statement. That's what's so cool, you know. So sometimes you hear that from a non-Christian or um, someone who denies God or uh, or isn't or not an agnostic and doesn't really not sure about God. And I, I just smirk a little bit because, you know, and sometimes I get to say, well, you know, that's from the Bible. So just so that people understand, a lot of people say, you know, say this rule as if it comes from somewhere else. And you see, because many philosophers and religious teachings have taught something very similar, <laughs> but significantly different. So we're going to play a video, and we're going to hear a little bit about that. Our media person has a little help today. You know the golden rule, right? Whoever has the gold makes the rules. I'm sorry, that's not as you would have them do unto you. There we go. That's from the Bible. Only it's not quite worded like that. Matthew 7, 12. So whatever you wish that others would do to you, do also to them, for this is the law and the prophets. Now some skeptics have tried to claim that the golden rule is not exclusive to the teachings of Jesus. It's actually so common and so basic a principle that many moralistic teachers have said something similar even way before Christianity. For example, Confucius, 500 years before Christ, said what you do not wish for yourself, do not do to others. But when you look at those two versions of the golden rule, they're actually very different. Jesus had this way of taking common principles, stuff that people had been repeating for hundreds of years and probably didn't follow it, they just liked saying it. And Jesus took it to a whole new level. Confucius and others like it were merely saying, don't do to anyone what you wouldn't want done to you. How is Jesus' statement different? It's a call to action. He said, do to others what you would have them do to you. In other words, just as you want others to treat you better than you deserve, so you should treat others better than they deserve. How is this the law and the prophets? Because it's exactly the way God treats us. We don't deserve his mercy and grace. What we deserve is death for our sin. But because he loves us, we become fellow heirs with Christ, everyone who follows him. All of the scriptures point to that very thing when we understand the text. Okay, so get it, right? Okay, so, so take some other philosophers. Hinduism, this is the sum of duty. Do not do to others, which if done to you would cause you pain. Buddhists, hurt not others with that which causes pain to you. Islam, no one is a believer until he desires for his brother the things he desires for himself. Taoism, regard your neighbor's gain as your own gain and your neighbor's loss as your own loss. You heard on the video, Jesus' rule, what we call the golden rule nowadays, in words was slightly different but significantly different in how it gets expressed. Significantly different in the guideline for our living, a guideline for righteous and right and holy conduct towards others. He requires you to do something favorable to others. Do unto others. You see, the others say, you know, don't hurt others with anything that might hurt you. You know, so if you uh, if you don't mind yelling, you can yell at others, right? Because it doesn't hurt you. So 
You can do it. You see, Jesus is very different. Do, be active. The others that I just spoke of, Hinduism and you heard about Confucianism, Islam, Taoism, only prohibits you from doing something unfavorable toward others. With Jesus, what is required is that you and I show kindness, show mercy, show love, show generosity to others. That's why it's called the golden rule. By the way, as I said, the golden rule, that phrase is not in the Bible. It's what we have labeled it. It's what we heard in, in the gospel reading, the reading we do in the center of the aisle, that we heard today. Jesus did not say, treat people the same way that they treat you. So if they lie to you, you can lie to them. If they yell at you, you can yell at them. If they steal from you, you can steal from them. Jesus doesn't say that. He says, respond. Respond. No. He doesn't say respond. Respond. No. He says, do unto others. You've heard the bumper sticker, you've seen the bumper sticker, do unto others before they do it to you. Right? That's very cynical. And that's what our world expresses to us. But Jesus says, whatever you want people to do to you, do to them first. However you want people to treat you, treat them that way first. So here's the rub. Do not do to others what you don't want them to do to you can be observed by anyone, can it? Because it doesn't take any initiative. You can just hang out and bench and be a couch potato if you want because it's not about any work or care or concern on your part. Do not do to others is really easy to take care of. But Jesus is teaching do unto others requires action. It requires energy. It requires effort. It requires conscious care for others. And this was very counter-cultural in the time of Jesus. It was very revolutionary. See, Jesus was a revolutionary. And he taught contrary to what society was was all about and, and what Jews believed to be true and right and how to honor God. And so this is very uh, counter-cultural because the scripture says, the commandments say, don't, don't steal, don't uh, harm your neighbor, don't covet, don't um, dishonor God by plucking corn in the field on the Sabbath. It's about don't doing. Pleasing God is about not doing things. And what Jesus does is turn this whole concept upside down and says, no, it's not about don't, because then you'd have a million rules. It's about do unto others with love and care and respect, because that's how you want to be treated. So do that for others. Care for others. He said if you love others as yourself, if you do for others as you want them to do for you, if you if you turn the other cheek, you are honoring God. You are pleasing God. And therefore you are you are honoring the and fulfilling the entire commandments of God. That's that's just so unheard of in Jesus' time. And so Jesus became the prime example of the golden rule in action, didn't he? Time after time, Jesus shone forth the golden rule in his actions and his words. He had compassion on the 5,000 people who are hungry on the hillside after he had been teaching all day. 
And the disciples came to him and said, you know, Jesus, you got to send them away. They got to get something to eat. They're hungry. And, you know, and Jesus said, well, you feed them. We're going to feed them together. Jesus uh, healed people of their infirmities, the guy who was blind, um, the one who couldn't walk, the one who was lowered down into the, into the house after the crowds were all around him. And Jesus didn't say, get out of here. He says, okay, I'm going to heal you. When miracles were needed and waves needed to be settled down and winds needed to be calmed down, Jesus did it. He did for others. He showed compassion and care. When the disciples were hungry on the Sabbath, Jesus had them pick corn to eat. I mean, you don't do anything on the Sabbath. Remember, you don't do anything on the Sabbath. You don't pick up a rock and move it from here to there. And so, it, so Jesus uh, says, well, go pick some ears of corn. Well, everybody's looking at this. This is, again, countercultural. And, they, and they're, they're, everybody's beside themselves because Jesus is having the disciples pick corn to eat because they're hungry. And Jesus said, the Sabbath was made for us. For us to enjoy, not the Sabbath made for God, but for us. And so it's okay to pick corn. It's okay to eat. It's okay. He cast out demons, and the demon possessed. He, uh, he uh, healed the centurion slave who was at death's door, and so on. The stories go on and on. He demonstrated the golden rule. He cared for other people. If everyone truly followed the golden rule, the real golden rule, that Jesus laid down in scripture would solve an awful lot of problems, wouldn't it? It would solve a lot of political problems. It would solve a lot of church difficulties. It would solve a lot of relationship issues. It would solve a lot of marriages and, and family issues. And so the question is, is there something you don't want? Is there something you don't want your spouse to do to you? Is there something you don't want your child your teenager, your coworker to do to you? Is there something you don't want your neighbor to do to you, your friend, your boss, your cousin, your aunt, your grandmother? You don't want them to do it to you? It starts with you. That's what Jesus is saying. It starts with you and me. That we ought not to do it to that person. So the question is, have you been living the golden years? No matter how old you are, if you're five years old, as we're trying to talk to the kids a little bit, or if you're 55 years old, or 75 years old, or 90 years old, are you living the golden years? Has your attitude been golden lately? Do to others what you would have them do to you. The key is do. And the follow-up to the key is to unlock the door, once you put the key in, without expectation, without expecting return, without expecting applause, without expecting recognition. Just do it, the Nike commercial, just do it. Do it, do it without anything, any ulterior motive, any want on your part. Take the initiative, not to get something back, simply to give, to be, to do, to help, to care for another person. So, do you want to be forgiven? Do you like being forgiven? We all like being forgiven then surely there's other people around you that like and would like to be forgiven. Be a forgiving person. Do you like being affirmed? Do you, and you're, maybe you need to be affirmed or wanting affirmation? Enjoy being uh, affirmed? 
Well then, surely there are other people around you in your world that would enjoy or need affirmation. So be a person who affirms others. Do you enjoy encouragement? Do you en enjoy um, feeling like you, you know, you got somebody behind you, a balcony person applauding you? Then surely there are other people around you that need a balcony person, that need someone who's going to encourage you. So be an encourager. Be a balcony person and applaud and encourage someone else. You don't like feeling hurt or abused? You want a gentle touch in your life? Be someone who offers a gentle touch. You would enjoy having joy and happiness and, and peace in your life? Well, surely there are other people around you that want peace and joy and happiness in their lives. So be a person that brings joy to others, that brings peace to others. Are you uh, wanting or needing or enjoy when people understand you and give you the benefit of the doubt? There are others around you who certainly want the benefit of the doubt who would, would revel in being understood. So be someone who is generous in understanding others. And remember, it's not so you get something back. It's not quid pro quo. It's not something for something else. It's not about receiving something back from that person. It is about putting yourself in another person's shoes, in another person's situation, in another person's life. As soon as I start being critical in my mind, I stop and I say, well, I don't know what that person's going through. I don't know what that family is going through. We have to stop being critical and analyzing everyone else and just be generous in our care for other people. It's knowing that others want the same dignity we want. They want the same love and care that we want. That they, that they want to have compassion and understanding like we want compassion and understanding. So it's really through the power of the Holy Spirit working within us and stirring in us the desire to treat others the way we want to be treated. That we are able to selflessly, actively, generously, and wonderfully live out the golden rule. We will want to not be harsh with others. We will want to be understanding. We will want to be forgiving. We will want to be attentive in our listening. We will want to be helpful. We will want to be respectful. We will want to be um, a forgiver. We would want to rise above retaliation. We would want to let go of criticism. I dare say that with the help of God, through the power of the Holy Spirit, our marriages, our home life, our children, our work life, our relationships will flourish. They will grow. They will be transformed. And you yourself, me, myself, will be renewed in our, in, in our hearts and our minds and in our attitudes, our emotions will be renewed because we are doing for others. That's how we receive, not from others, but from God himself 
as we are transformed by living the golden rule. Heavenly Father, it's not easy. In this day and age, we want to get for ourselves before others get us. And so, you know, that's the cynical way to live, Lord. You call us to live by doing for others first, caring for others first, and then all of that stuff will come back to us. That's the blessing of living a life that honors you and that loves and serves other people. That's a life worth living, Lord. And so help us to live what we call the golden rule, what Jesus calls us to do, to do and not to be, but to do the golden rule, to be active in serving and kindness and love and be people of, of forgiveness and be people of mercy, be people of gracious love and understanding love. Heavenly Father, we thank you for that rule that kind of guides us and directs us. Help us to live up and through that rule. We're not perfect, Lord, but we're, we strive, we strive to live according to your kingdom values. So help us. One of the ways that we do that, Lord, is to pray for one another, to gather up our prayer requests. That is certainly a way that, that um, we live out that, that, that golden rule, to love others, to pray for others first. And so we pray for Deacon Chris and Bill uh, DePew. We pray for Kennedy and, and uh, Joanna Taylor and Thomas and Mickey and Elaine. We pray.